Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Today I have a fun one for y'all. We're going to be hand forging a small Damascus knife. Now I've had these pieces of 15 and 20 and 1080 lying around for years, all the way back to when I was 16 and just started making knives. So it's about time that they got put to good use. Since I don't have a hydraulic press, I'll be making this Damascus billet by hand. In light of that, I'm going to be making a small billet of only 11 layers here, and I think this is around two and a half inches long. So to start off, I stack my pieces and get them all cleaned up. You saw that I surface ground the mill scale off of the pieces, and then I weld them together, in this case, with my FluxCore Hobart welder. I then take an angle grinder and clean up these welds, get the slag off, and then prepare to heat the billet. On the way up to my welding heat, I will take some borax and try to get it into all of the creases on the sides of the billet to prevent any oxidation in between layers. This will give me a better chance at having a solid piece when I'm done without any inclusions. You saw that the first couple hammer strikes there were very light and they were very uh, targeted. I do that so I can set the wells initially and then I draw the billet out. In hindsight, I would have drawn this billet out a little bit longer and skinnier so that my next stack would have more layers. The nature of doing Damascus by hand means that I want all the advantages I could possibly have to have good welds. So I spend a lot of time and prep in between each welding cycle. You can see here that I am surface grinding the pieces so that I have nice, clean surfaces to mate together. Once I have these pieces cleaned up, I stack them again and weld them onto a handle. I then repeat the same operation I did before with the original stack. My original stack was 11 layers, so this will bring it up to 33 layers. I take time in the beginning to set my welds, and then start hammering away to draw out this billet. As y'all know, I am not the most experienced smith, so this takes me a while to do. I probably should get used to using the far end of the anvil and using the peen on the back end of my hammer. I do the same operation a third time, getting the piece nice and clean, and just for fun I wanted to etch it and see what 33 layers looks like. So not very exciting here. We're going to cut this thing up into three more pieces, stack it, weld it, and start drawing out the billet for the third and final time. This will bring my layer count up to 99 layers. As you can see over the course of this process I lost a lot of material, and I'm only going to be able to make a fairly small knife uh, with this billet. Once again, my bladesmithing skills are weak, so I try to forge extremely thick, and then I will grind thin. So you can see that I'm getting a basic blade shape here. I forge in the bevels very lightly, and then I put the entire billet into vermiculite so that it cools very slowly over the course of a few hours so that the material is super soft. Then I grind away all of the forge scale and also make sure that the piece I have is nice and solid with no massive inclusions. Then I draw out the design, the profile that I'll be shooting for with this billet and tape it on to the billet. This little three finger knife would be probably good for uh, someone who wants a minimalist type of knife to carry or maybe a kid or a child or a female with very small hands. So the first thing I do here is I get all of the profile up to a 220 grit finish with a 120 grit finish on the flats. Then I'll be drilling my holes. In this case, I'll be utilizing two Corpy fasteners. So I drill two number 13 holes and then two quarter inch holes in the middle just to have a little bit of space for the epoxy to move around and maybe take a little bit of weight off of the handle side. I'm going to be filing in my sharpening choil with a 532nd chainsaw file and then my jimping with this checkering file. I get a lot of questions on this checkering file. It's probably the largest question I get of where do you get this thing. So I'll put a link in the description below to where you can buy that checkering file for your jimping. So you see I put a muffle pipe into my forge, this just allows me to get a more even heat on the blade. I do two normalizing cycles, and then on my third cycle I will quench in Parks 50. And then quickly 
clamp in my straightening vise or jig so that the blade does not warp. I then clamp the blade between two straight pieces of metal during tempering to hold it flat during the tempering cycles. I will be tempering at around 410 degrees Fahrenheit for two hours for two cycles. After the tempering process, I clean up the spine of the knife to a 220 grit finish, and then I put some diagonal scratches along my edge so that I can see my scribe lines uh, that will be my target for my edge when I grind. I also want to clean up the edge area to make sure there's no decarb along that edge so I have a nice strong hard edge for my finished blade. On the surface grinder, I start with a 220 grit belt, move to a 360 grit gator belt, then a 400 grit cork belt for my finish on the flats. Not only does this give me a nice flat surface to glue handle scales to, it also allows me to have a nice surface finish across the blade uh, to ease my hand sanding. Using my DIY height scribe, I scribe in two lines parallel to each other along the edge to give me a target to grind to. On forged items that have the bevels slightly forged in like this piece, using that height scribe is easier than using the centerline scribes I was using before that use the side of the blade as a reference. So I start off with a 60 grit ceramic belt, then I move from a 120 to a 220 J-Flex belt to get my plunges dialed in and to finish out my grind. That headset magnifier actually really came in handy there, trying to make sure that my plunge lines were symmetrical. So this is what the blade looks like off the grinder. That's about a 220 grit finish and a 400 grit cork finish on the flats. I then clamp it to a piece of my carta and drill through my number 13 holes. On this knife, I know that I will be grinding the micarta scales down to the metal on the spine before glue up. So I make sure to grind the micarta as close as I can to my scribed line here to minimize the amount of work I'll have to do. So you can see I'm getting really close to that scribe line. Then I just make sure that my scales are flat on my surface plate and then drill in my steps here for my Corby fasteners with this counter bore tool from Pops Knife Supply. I'm drilling into my handle scales around two and a half sixteenths of an inch. And then modify these Corby fasteners so that they're around a quarter of an inch from inside head to inside head. Next I'll do a dry fit here to make sure everything is nice and tight. And I will also be grinding the micarta down to the spine. To avoid putting any large scratches into the spine of my knife, I'm going to be using a fresh 220 grit belt to get everything nice and flush. This is only possible because I minimized the amount of stock that I had uh, beforehand and I, don't have, I didn't have a lot to take off. I then bring up the spine to a 1000 grit finish. This is going to be the finish or the final finish of my handle scale, so I figured I might as well bring it all the way. I then mark off where I'll be grinding the bevels or the chamfer around this entire handle scale. I tried using my grinder in this orientation and I really didn't like it, so I decided it's time to make a nice metal 45 degree angle jig. I had a wooden one before, but it wasn't as precise and level, so I just wanted to make this piece so that I can use it in the future for the front of my handle scales. So I take a lot of time here. Getting the curved section is actually pretty difficult. You have to use the corner of your platen, but just take your time here and you can grind down to that line fairly easily. I got it up to a 220 grit finish on the belts. After I got it all you know, to the line with a 220 grit belt, I moved on to a 320 grit paper, to a 600 grit paper, and finally to a 1000 grit paper to finish off these handle scales. At this point, the bulk of the work on the handle scales is done. We're gonna be finishing out the blade now. So the first step is to make sure I have a nice clean surface to lay the blade down onto. 
and then I will hand sand it up to a 320 grit finish. I do this diagonally because my final grit will be a 600 grit finish and I will do that along the length of the blade. I'm using a hard backer that is a metal bar in this case so that I don't wash out any of the lines and I can make sure that both of my bevels are flat. On the final grit and the final passes I will use a soft backer to kind of blend things in a little bit more. So this is a 600 grit finish and we're going to be etching on the maker's mark and then etching in Damascus. To etch my maker's mark I put the etching machine in DC. I hit it about 12 times for one second to get it nice and deep and then I hit it three times on AC power to get it dark. Then I hit it with some thousand grit sandpaper and that's how my maker's mark looks. My first etching cycle I etched for six minutes in a 50-50 ratio ferric chloride water mix. You can see it came out nice and dark here and then used some steel wool to knock off all of the buildup and then put it back into the etchant for two minutes and then repeated this cycle three times. The final two times I was using a piece of 2500 grit sandpaper just to make all of the 15 and 20 nice and shiny. I then used some window cleaner at the very end with ammonia in it to neutralize the acid and just for good measure I coated it down in baking soda as well. So now we're on to the glue up and this is a fairly precarious time for the build of this knife. I don't want to have any epoxy along the spine if I can help it and also the nature of these Corby fasteners to the holes there's just a little bit of play on the scales up and down. So once I have this thing uh, starting to get tight, I'm gonna have to make sure that the scales are in line with the scale of the knife. So this glue up took a little bit longer than normal. If you're used to using a fast setting epoxy, this would be a good time to use a slow setting epoxy just to give you time to make adjustments. So I put a nice even coat of epoxy on here and then I tighten up the handle scales and then spend about 10 minutes uh, with a little bit of rubbing alcohol making sure that there's no epoxy anywhere on the surface of this handle. Now unfortunately during my glue up I guess I put a small scratch into the spine of the knife. I noticed it after the glue up and I was pretty pissed about it however I was able to fix this later on in the process and you will see how I did that. When I get everything nice and protected and then I cut off the heads of these Corby fasteners carefully I uh, actually messed up on the first one and cut into the scale just a little bit, but it wasn't too deep and I'll be able to get that out. You can see it here on the left hand side. I go to the grinder with a 220 grit belt and I get these Corpy fasteners flush with the flats of the scales. Then with a hard backer uh, and some 600 grit sandpaper, I go to work on the flats of these scales. This actually didn't take as long as you would think. I get both sides up to 600 and then finally up to 1000 grit. And then what you're about to see is me attack the scratch on the spine of the knife with some 2500 grit sandpaper. This actually worked in this case and that little scratch I was talking about came out. Now it did change the finish a little bit along the spine of the knife and I went ahead and used that 2500 grit paper along the entire spine of the knife which is now slightly shinier than the flats of my blade. Using my Win water-cooled sharpening system, I put my initial secondary bevel into the blade. And then I have these two diamond sharpening stones that are designed for an Edge Pro, but I would like to use them just as regular sharpening stones. So I took a piece of wood here, uh, cut it off to this appropriate length, flattened it, and then I will be super gluing these two diamond stones to each side so that I can clamp this into a vise comfortably. After I have my initial edge on the knife with the wind sharpener, I go to my 400 grit diamond stone and dial it up even more. Then using the power strop on my wind machine, I will strop both sides of this edge. So at this point the knife is shaving sharp easily. I even cut some pretty lightweight paper there and we are good to go. I sprayed it down with some ballastol and then this is the finished product. Considering that I haven't made Damascus in a very long time, 
I'm ecstatic with how this knife turned out. The 99 layer random pattern actually looks really good. I was afraid that that was slightly too low of a layer count to see some detail, but I'm really happy with the, uh, with the design here. I also like on this one that I can see the pattern along the spine of the knife. A lot of times I will take a stone wash knife and grind a satin finish in a spine, which is totally fine, but this just took a little bit more effort to complete, but I think it was worth it in the end. So if you guys like this video, go ahead and click that like button down below and consider subscribing to the channel. Until the next time, I'll catch y'all on the flip side.